Okay, what's up everybody? My name is Sean Ali. As you may already know, but if you're watching this from somewhere else, you know my name. It's my presentation on what matters to me, myself, and I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now in the world today, there's a lot of racism stereotyping towards white people, black people, Asians, African Americans, Arabs, and a lot of their comments sometimes come from fact, what they see in the real world, but sometimes they just make it up. So, <laughs> today I'm going to talk about influences on racism and stereotypes, examples on racism and stereotypes, and how we can start to end this as the days, years, months go by. Alright, we'll start with Arab stereotypes. Now, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of a Muslim or an Arab? Arab. It's probably like ISIS or Al Qaeda, Bin Laden, or like suicide bombers. But I'm here to tell you that's not a good way to think. Because in my book, The Holy Quran, it specifically states that violence is put down and you shouldn't do it unless you're in defense of yourself or your religion. But it sounds like I'm defending myself, right? But I'm really not. Because it says the same thing in other books too, too such as nonviolence in the Hindu Vedas in the Torah. And then it also says it in the Bible. So why is it that Islam and um, my Quran is being targeted for this? Because that's what people want you to think. The same thing goes for African Americans. They're the target of words such as like ghetto, thugs, gangsters, and now they're the same targets of a string of police brutality cases where they're seen as the victims and they're being killed without reason. But there is actually a reason because they're not showing the whole story. Because in many of these cases, they're actually the aggressors and instigators, and they're doing a crime such as theft and arson. And so, but nobody's showing the full story about this. So, that. The next one would be Indian stereotypes. Not all of them are poor, hardworking farmers that are kind of geniuses. Because I mean, I'm Indian mostly, and I'm presenting right now, and I'm not a farm. And I mean, most of like and stuff, like, as a matter of fact, religions such as Buddhism began in India. And at one time during, I believe it was the Mauryan dynasty, there were more Muslims in India than there were Hindus. So, but that changed after the partition in 1947, when India and Pakistan split up. And then the next one would be Asian stereotypes. But this, the word itself is an insult. Because Asia incorporates people like Koreans, Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, and even Indians and Pakistanis. So this affects like a really wide area in Asia. But for some reason this focus is mostly on Chinese people. And they're not all like bad driving, fried rice making, like karate masters, <laughs> usually math geniuses. Some of them don't even get to go to school. And they're forced to a life of labor, either on the farm fields or in factories in China. And in effect, this has severely affected our youth today. Because children grow up absorbing more than they take out. Because when a child is born, he comes into the world with nothing. And he learns what his parents and people around him teach him. So when they grow up, it's like they grow up uh, already with the perspective on people and how they look, how they talk, what religion they have, who they worship. And they're prejudging people without having to know them first. That guy. <laughs> For example, if you were a, a a son or daughter of a slave owner on a plantation in the 1800s in North America, you would probably think of yourself as higher than everyone on this field, the indentured servants and the slaves, because just because they picked cotton or they harvested cash crops. But imagine a world without the kind of prejudice and stereotyping. Imagine a world without racism. You could avoid unnecessary wars, get abolished caste systems in places such as like India, and get rid of poverty in some places that they think of higher than lower. But the only reason that we can think of this is because we need us youth. Because face it, we're the men and women of tomorrow. So, but we have to make a difference today. Not in only our lives, but in the lives of others. Through things such as social media and stuff like that. But there's also a good side to this, but I just did a presentation on the negative effects of this, and you wouldn't think there were no positive sides. But there actually are. It's not a lot, but there's good sides to it. Like people like me, 
people like me and my friends and people around the world have to fight this kind of racism every second because we have to fight against it. We have to show them that we're not all like the people that they see on Fox News. And there's like, I'm Indian, but I'm not on a field and stuff like that. But finally, I have one serious question to post to you guys. Are you going to end racism after seeing this, or are you just going to keep instigating it even more and just keep doing it through your lives?